There's no return flights. Wow, guy's up to 417 HP. He's on the move. Oh, come on, really? I guess there's good guild opportunities in these when there's so many. Yeah, it's definitely not worth spending 700 to get to here. It really isn't. That would have been dumb. I'm glad I didn't now. <laughs> Still no level 4, come on man. Okay, very close. Alright, speak to Princess Hilda again. Sunfire is the crest of the Kingdom of Kashuan. Its flame still burns on the ground floor of Kashuan Keep. Scott and Gordon have told me many stories concerning the flame. The finer points of the tale are not known to me. However, I seem to recall the flame cannot be held in just any torch. Sid told us, Sid told us that we might be able to use Sunfire to destroy the Dreadnought. There's no time to waste. You must depart for Kashuan Keep at once. If you hire Sid's airship, the journey should not take long. That leaves only one question. What can you use to bring the Sunfire back? Yeah, okay. So Scott and Gordon seem to know more about the tale. Do you have anything new to say you're going to keep being an arsehole? He's just going to keep being an arsehole. Okay. That's fine. Um, try to remember where that guy was. I think he was in Gatreya, I want to say. Just speak to the king one more time as well. And Minwoo, to be honest. Every three years, they celebrate a festival of the flame in Kashuan. During the festival, the sunfire, the sunfire is moved to Egil's torch while its brazier is cleansed. During the festival, the sunfire is moved to Egil's torch. Scott sealed the gates of Kashuan Keep to protect the Sunfire in the event they were defeated in battle. You will need the Goddess's Bell to break the seal. Okay. I In general, I, I actually like the keyword system. Because it the way it just encourages you to speak to NPCs and figure things out along the way, I think that's kind of cool. I've been enjoying the keyword system personally. Okay. The whereabouts of the bell are known only to the Kashuan royal family. Okay. Gordon would know where the bell is kept, but I have not seen him lately. Someone close to Scott or Gordon may know where to find it. Okay. Yeah, so this whole, like, investigatory approach, I, I don't know, I, I generally like it. I think it suits the, the style of these games. They're less able to build it, I think, with like the party members and like the way they journey together and that kind of thing. So the interactions that they make you have with the like the NPCs and stuff, I think is a good way to fill in some of that. So yeah, I'm I'm happy about it. I've heard Scott and Gordon mention the bell. The gates of Kashuan keep open only to the voice of a Kashuan or the ringing of that bell. The bell rests deep within a cavern on the snow plains. It would not be easy to retrieve. So, it is your intention to enter the snow cavern. Very well. If only Gordon were here, there would be no need for you to risk such danger. But he isn't, so you must. There is nothing I can do but pray for your success. Joseph knows the snow plains like the back of his hand. You should seek his counsel. See? There you go. So, I was like, should I look for Gordon or Scott? I don't remember exactly. One of them died, and I think the other one's alive, but has disappeared. But I was like, how am I supposed to find the one who's disappeared? And they're like, no, go to Joseph. You can figure it out with him. So, okay. 
Now, Joseph was all the way in Salamand. So we need to... We need to go there. So that's the way it's been going in general. Not a huge number of locations in the game. And uh, you're needing to, because of the keyword system especially, I think that's one of the downsides of it. It does force you to basically um, keep revisiting the same NPCs over and over to get more information. So that's definitely a downside. But overall, I kind of like the idea that they have with it. Even if the execution isn't like, perfect so far. So, that amount is one all the way up here, but it shouldn't be too hard to get to. And we almost have a level 4 fire spell, so that's also good. Hopefully less than three castings needed. There's one. Okay. that. Yeah, you can't properly start exploiting the basically fast travel until you have a really decent chunk of gill. And well, also you have the problem of it takes you to places, but then you can't fly back using the, the airship, it seems. So that doesn't help. Um, I can just... I don't need to pay to get there. I need to stack some more gill at this stage. There's lots of things I can do with it that I haven't been able to. There's probably more spells. There's uh, there's mithril weapons that I don't have. So we need gil. I think by the time I'm out of the snow cabin, hopefully I'll have a decent chunk. Come on now. There you go. Okay. That was kind of bad. That was kind of better. Okay, let's speak to... 883. Okay. Let's see what you have to say, sir. It looks like my same my daughter, yeah. Ask about Goddess's Bell. The only way to reach the snow cavern is on my snowcraft. I keep the snowcraft hidden in the mine. There's a blue stone on the first floor that marks the spot. And look behind the stone to the right, seat room. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, okay. That's dope. Nice. Uh, sorry I couldn't help you find the mithril, so I want to make up for that by pitching in now. What are we waiting for? Let's go. Oh, I see. All right. What kind of fighter is Joseph? Damn. Yeah, okay. A bit more of a, a physical fighter here. 99% accuracy. We'll take that. I think he just he's one of these he fights with his bare hands. He's just a beast. Yeah, he's a proper monk. Look at that. Legend. Okay. Sure, that's what he wants to do. Fine by me. But yeah, his HP isn't great, so we kind of have to be careful here. Uh, front row, relatively vulnerable defensively, so we'll see. But maybe that leaves Firion a little bit more free to... Um, to use some magic as well. Okay. Hmm... Not going to spend money on anything now. Let's get the Snowcraft first. What's the best way to get to it? Probably this way still. Again, he's a temporary party member, so I don't care too much. But I do want to see how much damage Fire 4 does now. Come on. Let's see it. Okay, it's not great. That is not great. 
mean, he's barely more than what Firion can do, and he's less of a mage. That's lame. Yeah, it seems they don't really want using magic attackingly against multiple enemies. Like, they don't want that to be too OP. Let's just give everybody a chance to do some damage here. Then again, Furion might take everyone out. Yeah. Yeah, his blizzards are level two, so should be less effective. Nice. I remember that sound effect well. Love it. The raw power. Let's get ourselves a snowmobile. Thankfully, we don't have to go too deep into here to get it. And this might also be how we get that final chest. Wow. Okay, the fact that the hit still goes zero on Joseph is a good sign. Right, here we go. Just gonna give it a big old punch. <laughs> nice. Joseph turns a small rock jutting out of the wall, and a passage appears. The snowcraft is in here. Yes, that's where the final chest is. Okay. So I think at this point we still have all the chests. And it was the, the snowcraft all along. Fair enough. Okay. That was easy enough. So, from here, what, where's the snow plains themselves? Okay, just suddenly getting ambushed by everything now. Fine. Bit rude. We will use a cure here with him. He's just too strong. She, she couldn't do anything. Yeah, that's where they are. Um... Wow. Yeah, I guess you probably access it through the back of Salamand or something. Though it's not. Wait, I think there's a small slither of space there, actually. mowing everything down at the moment. 
Still very few bosses in the game so far. Very few. I do hope it ramps up a little bit on that front later on. Yeah, there we go. And, well, hopefully we encounter some new enemies here as well. Let's go. Nice. That's cool. I was going to say, I assume we're definitely still going to get encounters here. Now, I want to see the difference between a singular level 3 from Firion versus Maria at this stage. It's fire 3. 194, as expected. Big damage. 250, okay. We'll have Guy take care of that. So there's not a massive HP jump or anything, at least. And we have 91 MP now. Good stuff. Hmm. Okay, at least it has more than 41 HP. We know that. Joseph hands. Joseph just throw in hands. That's all the man needs. Okay, they're just up in the snowman. We'll keep the ante up to ourselves. And Joseph will just keep throwing them hands. Okay, so less than 50 HP. Well, less than 54 HP at least. So around 50 HP tops. But this is a cool section, I have to say. Wow. Okay, there you go. At least when it's an element that they're weak to, we can get some one-hit KOs in there. Right. Does this? It still counts as the overworld, right? Yeah. Right. Let's go. Snow cavern B1, and the first step, we get more snowmen, of course. Now, again, I should try to not get too carried away with the MP here. But even, even he has some fire to offer here. Wow, that was not good. Yeah, Furion, not quite enough uh, damage to take them out in one hit if he's trying to hit multiples, but Guy doing a good job here. I think having three party members that can use fire could be very helpful for whatever boss we're going to fight. Ooh, here we go. Whole new set of enemies, except for one of them. That's cool. Let's see. I don't like the look of Deadhead at all. Okay, nice. Not a lot of HP. That went very smoothly. 300 gil from one of them. Wow. Okay. And 13 chests. Okay. There's already two of them on this floor. So this could be a fairly deep one, like four or five floors. So let's not get too carried away. I think especially when there's like four or less enemies. We can basically one-hit KO everything, so... Only thing is status ailments. We, we got hit with poison very early in the game, but other than that, we've not faced that many. So if they suddenly start hitting us with a status ailment that we're not prepared for, then we could be in trouble. So Things could change very quickly here. 
Yeah, very good defense. We're trying to bait you into using those, those fire spells and that MP. Nice. Hundred and ninety five. He's doing a lot more damage than Guy just with his bare hands. Yeah, definitely gonna be able to buy some goodies once I'm out of here. door here, but maybe that's just a way back out once we're done. Wow. But yeah, in general, nothing too problematic here. They, they've not really landed many hits on us, that's the problem for them. So I can't tell if there's status effects that are going to be problematic. interesting. Okay, so we have something that's a little bit more complex now. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, the icicles are definitely tough physically uh, against at least some weapons and some attacks. But if they're only appearing in ones and twos, it's not going to be a problem. So for now, at least uh, for a little while, MP Conservation is the name of the game. Yep. So these again, the rooms I go straight back out. I don't want to see what that deadhead can do. I feel like that's one of those enemies that could have a stays effect that could put us in a lot of trouble. But I think you can tell the level of the enemies has gone up in the way that, for example, Maria is starting to miss a lot more hits. She's getting a lot more like one hit than she was previously. Right, okay. So let's take the way up first to gain access to those chests that we've missed so far. Right, this could be a little more interesting. I think here is probably a bit more worth it to, to do some damage with magic. I mean, if there's a chance for a guy to one-hit KO something with magic, then I think we'll take that. Well, okay. So yeah, I think when we get this kind of situation happening, it's probably a bit more worth it to do this. Yeah, everything here is weak to fire, basically. The undead and the, the ice-based enemies. Pick up some goodies. This one I still take my chances because the encounter rate is just so high that MP just drains really fast. Especially if you want to go the extra mile to get all the chests and stuff, you're going to encounter like 20 more things. Hmm, ambush. Okay. Might see some stasis here. Yep. Did Furion get hit with it? He did not. Okay. It's hard to tell exactly what's happened to him. Uh, 
I mean, it looks like paralysis to me, obviously, but how that manifests here, I think this is the first time we've been paralyzed. Yeah, he just, he doesn't get a turn, so he's been paralyzed. And well, I want to find out what happens um, after battle. I guess he doesn't take a turn, so he doesn't get any experience either, potentially. Battle Axe. He's already got one, right? Yeah. His attack literally goes down. What does Optimal say? Optimal says this. 33 attack with 69% accuracy. But then it goes up to 99% with 36, so clearly that's not optimal. Again, these are the, the aspects of the mechanics in these games that I'm never that clued up on. Why the game believes that 33 attack with 69% accuracy is optimal over this, I don't know. Either because there's certain enemies that are weaker to certain types of equipment or something, but I don't know. It's never made too much sense to me. And well, it's not that necessary to think super deep about it. Just, just go for it. So yeah, in these encounters, I'm going to again try to avoid um, using magic for now. Except with him. That was not good. Wow. Okay. I guess he really did benefit from the back row. I didn't think it would make that big a difference. But dead head remains dead. There's one more chest. Let's grab it. Yeah. He's doing his thing. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. Ooh. You know what? Why don't we actually try and do something a bit different for a change? I hope they don't all immediately self-destruct. That'll be kind of lame. Beefy. Ah. Yeah, that's kind of a problem. I forgot, we don't have Phoenix down, so we don't have a second person with life, I think. Slight issue. Mithril Mace. Now, what can we do here? Honestly, I think I'm forced to teleport out of here to revive her. I can't continue the entire rest of the dungeon without her. That'd be kind of silly. And, actually, since she's the one who knows teleport, I'm kind of stuck. I have to walk my way out. So, this was me not having enough foresight. I definitely knew I wanted a second person with life, but Moon were only recently left the party, so I kind of forgot. And, well, Phoenix Down's a very expensive man, and we've not picked up any either. Okay. So we've put ourselves into a bit of a situation here. Like, not in trouble, but just something that's going to waste our time a bit. Like, we can always flee as well. So she's going to lose out on a little bit of experience here, but that's okay. And well, I have a lot of gill now, so I've got to remember who's offering the life spell so that I can... Oh, okay, now everyone wants to ambush me. Of course, as soon as I have a party member down, they decide that they want to ambush me all the time. 
Screw you guys. But yeah, I've got a lot of gill now, so I should be able to easily afford getting another lifestyle or two. I'll give one to Guy as well. It's another one of those who don't have too much to lose. 